You've probably heard the Benjamin Franklin quote, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. Well, it's the same with hitting. Yes, your plan is gonna change when the count changes and when the game situation changes, but it's very important for you to step in the batter's box with some idea of what you think might happen and what you're trying to accomplish at the plate. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you three simple steps to help you create a game plan for your at bat so that you can become a more productive hitter. Let's get into it. So step one in creating your game plan is understand the pitcher. That's step one. So we'll start from the basics. I'm gonna give you some things to think about and we'll progress from there. So first of all, is he a righty or a lefty? That's obviously pretty important, right? Is he a right-handed pitcher or a left-handed pitcher? Where's his release point? Is he a guy that throws over the top? Is he like three-quarter arm slot? Is he sidearm? Is he that rare pitcher where maybe he's submarine? Where's the ball coming from? What side of the, the rubber is the ball coming from? And where is he releasing the ball? Two pretty important things. Then think about his fastball. Is he a guy with subpar velocity? Is he a slower pitcher? Is he about average? Or is he about you know, a, a firm pitcher? And I encourage you, you know, try to categorize and try to put him into a camp, right? You don't have to guess exactly what his fastball is or anything like that, but is, is he about average? Is he above average? Is he below average, okay? So we've got you know, righty or lefty, where's his release point? How's his fastball? Then I want you to think about What's his bread and butter? So again, try to categorize him. Is he you know, a lefty with maybe subpar velocity on his fastball, but he's a crafty lefty who can throw any of his pitches he wants. He's great with off speed, and he can locate any pitch in any count in any situation, and he nibbles on the corners. He, he's probably not gonna come after you. Is that the camp that he's in? Or is he a hard throwing righty who over relies on his fastball and you know you can you can bet that with two strikes he's gonna try to blow you away with that fastball. Okay, so what does his fastball look like and you know what what kind of camp would you put him in? What's his bread and butter? Okay? Once you understand all of that, then it's time for you know it's game day and you know by watching him in the pregame bullpen or by watching him in between innings, okay, what pitches can he throw for strikes today? Not what pitches does he throw, I mean that's, that's somewhat important, but what can he throw for strikes today? Because especially at the lower levels of baseball, guys are not gonna be able to locate every single pitch for strikes. You know, they might really be missing for whatever reason with their curveball today. Maybe they typically are a four or five pitch guy, but today the only thing that they've proven that they can throw for a strike is their fastball and their changeup. They can't throw their curveball for a strike, they maybe can't throw their slider, their knuckleball, or whatever else they got. So, what you can do when you figure out, well, hey, this guy can only throw two of his pitches, two out of four or two out of five for strikes, you can eliminate, you can look to eliminate those other pitches when you step in the box until he proves otherwise. He might find it later on in the game and you might have to adjust, but at least going into the game, he can only throw two pitches for strikes. So are you gonna have more success at the plate if you're thinking, okay, fastball or changeup, or if you're thinking about, well, fastball, changeup, curveball, slider, knuckleball, slurve, you know, obviously, the more you can whittle it down, the greater your chances of success. So what pitches can he throw for strikes today? What are his tendencies? That's the next question that you can ask, okay? So does he always like to start hitters out with a particular pitch? Is it always a fastball? Is it always something off speed? What about pay attention to when a pitcher misses, okay? So let's say he tries to throw a first pitch curveball and he misses with it, right? It's a ball. Does he always, after missing with, with an off-speed pitch, does he always come back with a fastball? So try to pick up his tendencies. What does he do? You can pick up things like, you know, when there's a runner on first base, pay attention to does he vary his looks? Does he vary his timing to first base? Does he pick over? Or does he always just look once and then go to the plate? It's the little finer details of the game that are gonna make the biggest difference. So what are his tendencies? Then you can think about what is his out pitch? Okay, so in other words, what is a pitch where when he gets, you know, into to pressure situations or when he gets two strikes on you, what is that pitch that he looks to, you know, get a swing and a miss with? What is his, you know, put him away pitch? Is it a curveball in the dirt, try to get you to chase? Is it a high fastball because he can blow you away with it and it's eye level and it looks great? So what are his, his tendencies and then what is his out pitch? Then you can think about how has this pitcher pitched me in the past? I've talked about this previously. I think every hitter out there should keep a journal because chances are, no matter what level you play at, you're probably gonna play that particular team more than once in a season. So if you play, let's say you play this team four times, chances are you're probably gonna see that pitcher you know, three or four times. 
And so wouldn't you be better off if you kept track of, okay, you know, number nine over there, this is my fourth time, you know, hitting against him, fourth game hitting against him. He always throws me a first pitch fastball. Wouldn't that be great to know? Or when you get to two strikes, he always throws me a curveball in the dirt, tries to get me to chase with two strikes. Wouldn't that be great to know? Okay, so how has he pitched to you in the past? And then lastly, last thing you can think about is how is he pitching my teammates today? You should always be watching the game. What's going on? Again, tendencies. Look for all the stuff we talked about. What's he doing? You know, is he, when he gets hitters down in the count, you know, is he trying to put them away with a particular pitch? What does he like to start hitters off with? How about where are we at in the lineup? You know, what does he, uh, what does he like to do with guys that are at the top of the lineup versus guys that are at the, in the heart of the order or guys at the bottom of the order? Does that change? So these are all things you can think about. I know it sounds like a lot, but you can really, you know, think about these things really, really quickly. It happens in a matter of of, of seconds, right? But that's step one in creating your game plan. You have to understand the pitcher. All right, so that seems like a lot of stuff, right? Understanding the pitcher, but it's really not a whole lot. It really, like I said, it happens in a matter of a few seconds, and you just gotta understand it's important because when you step up to the plate, when you step in the batter's box, you're going to war. You're going to war against that pitcher, and I think the better that you understand your opponent, the better off you'll be, and the more the odds will be in your favor, okay? But that's the that's the, the most elaborate part of the plan, understanding the pitcher. These next two are gonna fly right by. And by the way, if you're liking this stuff, please leave a like on this video i'd really appreciate that it helps the channel grow so if you like this if you want me to continue making these types of instructional videos please hit that thumbs up button all right so step one we understand the picture now now step two understand yourself so a couple key questions that you can ask how was bp today how was it you know how was bp if you did on field bp were you squaring it up were you spraying the ball all over the yard how was BP? Or if you didn't take on-field BP, how did you feel when you were hitting off of the tee? How does your body feel today? All right, those are some things you can think about. What are your strengths? Currently, right now, not last year, not last game, what are your strengths right now? Based on how BP was, based on how maybe the last couple games have gone, you know, what are your strengths? Are you, you know, really crushing the inside pitch? Do you feel confident at the plate? Um, do you feel like you've got tremendous bat speed? What are your strengths right now? And then vice versa, you know, what are you struggling with? Just be honest. You don't have to tell the pitcher what you're struggling with, but be honest with yourself. Hey, I'm really struggling with that outside pitch. Hey, I'm really struggling with curveballs right now. Hey, I'm really struggling with when I step in the box, I'm not really ready to go. It takes me a pitch or two before I'm really ready to go. So how is BP? What are your strengths? Okay, what are your weaknesses? All right, another thing you can think about, what do you want to have happen? All right, if you could pause the game and tell the pitcher exactly what pitch to throw and exactly where to throw it, what do you want to have happen? Do you want it to be a fastball in the inner half? Do you want it to be a hanging curveball? What do you really want? What would be like if you could snap your fingers and dream scenario? What pitch would you want? What location? All right. And then last thing, understanding yourself, how would you pitch yourself? I call this the reverse at bat. So if you were on the mound, staring at yourself, how would you pitch yourself? What do you think? Obviously the pitch is trying to exploit your weaknesses. So what do you think your weaknesses are? How would you, what pitch would you start you off with, right? So these are all things that kind of can help you come up with a plan for, okay, now I understand the pitcher and now I understand myself a little bit better. And the third step for creating your game plan is understand the situation. That's pretty important, right? We got to understand what's the score. Are we up or down? What third of the game is it? Great teams focus on winning one third at a time. You can break a nine inning game down into the first three innings, the first third, the middle third, and the the late third. So what third are we in? Is it early? Is it in the middle of the game? Is it late in the game? We need to make something happen. So what's the score? You know, what third are we in? Where are we at in the lineup? Okay, where are we at in the lineup? Is it, are are we, uh, you know, at the top of the lineup? Are we at the bottom of the lineup? Are we in the heart of the order? Where are we at in the lineup? All right, that's pretty important. You know, as you're, you know, getting ready for, for your at bat, okay, what's the situation? You know, is there any runners on base? How many outs are there? Okay, is this a situation where a coach might, you know, ask you to execute a job? He might ask you to, you know, execute a hit and run here or lay down a bunt here, maybe first and second, nobody out. These are all things that you need to be thinking about. Just overall, where are we at in the game? What's the score? What's the situation? You're anticipating, you know, potentially what might happen, okay? That's all gonna help you create your game plan. So it starts out by, we have to understand the pitcher. 
we have to understand ourselves, and then we have to understand the situation. At that point in time, it's really pretty simple. So it's a series of questions that you just run through your head really, really quickly. This is not a 10 minute deal. This is just really quickly before you're at bat. Okay, what about this pitcher do I need to know? What about me do I need to know? What about the situation do I need to know? And then you just formulate a game plan. So you think about, you know, am I free swinging? Is it early in the game? Nobody out, nobody on base. No sign, am I just gonna be up there trying to hit a ball hard somewhere, free swinging? Or is it a situation where a coach might you know, ask me to do a job here and I might have to execute a bunt or a hit and run or a sack fly? So you know that all goes into creating your game plan and then once you set your game plan and you walk up to the plate, you have an intention, then it's about just relaxing, having fun, playing pitch to pitch, and you know your game plan's gonna change and it's just a framework and you just gotta you know, have fun, compete, and play one pitch at a time and the results will be there. The rest will take care of itself. But that's how you create a little game plan so you're ready for your at bat. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. I'd really appreciate that. And hitters, I put together a free contact point checklist that I really think is gonna help you out. It's 100% free. You can download it by clicking on the link down below in the description. I'll also post that link in the comment section. But what I've done is I've freeze framed the swing at the point of contact and I've highlighted a few key areas, a few key elements that every great hitter has at the point of contact. So you need to make sure your swing has these things in order to really maximize your bat speed and your power and maximize your potential as a hitter. So 100% free, go download that right now. Be sure to hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, that way you never miss any of our upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you next time.